called HPC Cuba, which is basically like the VSC. It's a little bit modeled after the VSC, semi supercomputer center, but on a Caribbean island. So I want to share with you a few uh, experiences and numbers there. Uh, do you all know where Cuba is? It's the biggest island in the Caribbean, really close to Miami. It's a uh, very nice tropical climate. It's a very special country if you look at its history, also the, the recent history, by the past 50 or 100 years. But it's a very exciting place to be. So you have, yeah. you have the capital, Havana, and then we also work a lot in Santiago de Cuba, which is all the way on the other side of the island, really close to Jamaica. And we have also a lot of friends in uh, Santa Clara, which is in the center of the island. So Cuba is very well known for the old cars, the 50s cars, and the tropical beaches. But they also have a lot of universities of surprisingly high quality, especially considering uh, the very low budget they have for maintenance of their infrastructure, basically zero. Uh, and they suffer from a, a, what they call a blockade, so an, an economical embargo, where they cannot do any kind of business with a company that also does business with the United States. Basically, as a, as a company, you can choose either you work with the United States economy or you work with Cuba. Yeah? <laughs> you cannot do both because then you're illegal in the United States. So this works very much against them because they're a much smaller economy. Uh, but they have one strength, and that's their human capital. Uh, a lot of very bright uh, young people working at universities. Uh, a lot of energy there, and a lot of desire to learn. And it's very amazing every time the humans come here how much they already know, how much they are aware of what exists in the world, and how many experiences they have regarding, uh, if you look at the minimal infrastructure that they have to, to practice with. So, this is me. So, in Cuba there's a lot of universities, basically every uh, province has at least one. Uh, some of them are relatively small. We work together with some of the biggest in the capital, in the center of the island, and all the way in the east. And, but they have a good network. There's fiber connections everywhere, so all the universities are interconnected. And they can, uh, uh, like, access to the internet is very limited, it's very difficult. It used to be all through satellite because all the submarine cables make a big tour around the island going to the, to the United States, and they, they only have like one satellite connection. It's getting better now that they have a submarine cable that comes from Venezuela, passes through Jamaica, and it comes to Santiago de Cuba. So it's getting better and better, but the local network is pretty good. That's the internet. So, we started with uh, HBC Cuba, La Red, La Red Académica de Computación de Alto Desempeño. So it's the academic network for high-performance computing. We work with the University for Computer Science in Havana, University of Santa Clara in Santiago. In these three places, we already have hardware installed. Basically, the data centers in Santa Clara and Santiago were built as part of the, uh, the projects that we work on. And they're built with uh, decommissioned material from Ghent University. Yes. So we used to have a lot of small server rooms before we built the big data center. You remember? You know, you weren't at the university yet. Well, we used to have a lot of uh, small server rooms, and then we were, were lucky to get a big new data center. So we moved all the small server rooms into the data center, and this made that there was a lot of equipment that we didn't need anymore. And a lot of racks, a lot of power distribution, uh, cooling and such. And we moved all this stuff, if it was still working, we moved it to Cuba. And also when we decommissioned uh, a cluster here, but it's still working. We look for transport, we send our container ship to Cuba. So now we have in uh, three data centers, two of which were built as part of the project, and one that was already there with uh, government funding. We now have uh, various clusters running. Close up. So this one is in Havana, the same one. Uh, these were, they were both together, they were one cluster in Ghent. Now one is in Havana and one is in Santa Clara. And in Universidad de Oriente, in Santiago, all the way in the east, we have a different one. 
with infinity bounds. Uh, give you some ideas, these are of course different dimensions than what we are used to in, uh, in Belgium, or what you are using here in the data center. But these are by far the biggest supercomputers in Cuba and probably in the Caribbean. Okay. Uh, we are also part, because we use this hardware, we are part of the uh, Ibero American uh, High Performance Computing Network, which is like sort of praise, but for Latin America and Spain. And we are a member of this with the HPC Cuba. And also, we are ahead of Ghent University because we are already using GPUs and we have two fully functioning big data clusters, uh, centralized big data clusters running in Cuba now, available uh, to all kinds of people. So, well, if you don't know the Cuban context, you probably don't realize how awesome it is to have this running there because it's, it's not common. Uh, we also have a, a central LDAP based on Open LDAP that runs nationally. So if you get an account at one of the universities, you have access to all the, the clusters at all the universities. So basically, the idea is that any kind of human scientist, no matter at which university he works or in some laboratory, uh, some scientific institute, not even linked directly to a university, if he gets an account, he has access or she has access to all the available clusters everywhere in the island. There's also a national user portal, very nice uh, web interface where you can uh, see all your running jobs, you can see their status, you can submit jobs through the, the web page, and it works really fine. 100% Cuban made. Also, all the packages, everything we use, everything is uh, free and open source software. And we're also using EasyBuild. You all know EasyBuild? You know it's EasyBuild? Raise your hands who knows easy build. Okay, okay. So humans know easy build too, and they're even contributing uh, to it. We're uh, stimulating young people, master students, to do their master thesis on uh, easy build and to uh, make some easy blocks for their graduation. And this has been going, you know, it's getting better and better. So uh, we organize trainings where people from all over Cuba come together and then we invite some guy from Ghent to go there, to see Alba over there, to, uh, to talk about a specific subject that he can know more about than the Cubans and then we have some uh, exchanges. Also these guys are not all from the same university, so sometimes it's the first time they meet each other in person because they live a thousand kilometers apart and then they can uh, exchange their experiences. So we do a lot of uh, Human capacity building in Cuba. HPC experts, so sysadmins talking to each other in Belgium and in Cuba, but also now we just got new funding from VLIV for the coming three years to do the same, but also for HPC users. Yes? Uh, this is a bit difficult for me because I don't know many users. I know some HPC administrators, my colleagues here. So I was uh, very happy to see that there was a Kent University HPC user day, and that's why I wanted to meet you, because we need some experienced users to talk to the human users. Yes? So if you are uh, very aptly at uh, code optimization, at making sure your code runs in parallel, and you think you can explain this to a human scientist, well, then maybe I've got news for you because we're looking for people and I'll buy your plane ticket and pay for your hotel and you can go to Cuba. Please. It's not a holiday, but you can stay and then <laughs> oh, okay, when the work is done you can just stay there and have a holiday. It's no problem. Okay? So you need HPC experts and expert users to work with us. Oh boy, the color changed. So, if you want to be part of making supercomputing services available to all Cuban scientists, please email me or Hector, you can uh, write my Cuban counterpart too, but this is my email, Dieter and then uh, hopefully we can work together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes. The Spanish does not have to be excellent in order to do it. English is pretty good.